Hello and welcome to another Dennis Wick Products interview. And uh, I'm really pleased today that I've got the chance to speak to Yannicka Ellingson. So I'm not going to say where Yannick's from. I'm going to let her introduce herself and talk a little bit about why she lives where she is. Yeah, uh, thank you. I am from Norway. I am from um, Bergen in Norway. But now I have moved all the way up to the north of Norway to a city called Hafsta. It's, uh, it's a small city. It's quite cold and dark, but cozy. And I live here because of my work that is uh, the arm event, Norwegian arm event. And how long have you played in the army band? Is it uh, a long time or is it a recent thing? Well, it's quite recent. I I went up here first time in January 21, in the middle of the COVID times, uh, just uh, for six months for a start. And then I just stayed here for uh, two and a half years until the position was free and I had to do audition to to win the job. So that was in uh, March this year. Uh, so now I am staying. Now I got the job. Mm. Excellent. And uh, it's fair to say that you're not just uh, a euphonium player, you also play the trombone. So what was your attraction to those instruments? Because it could have been cello, it could have been guitar. Uh, why sort of um, tenor instruments uh, in the brass family? Uh, the reason for my euphonium is uh, my teacher, Tomot Flauten. He was a conductor in my school band when I was young. And I was a cornet player when uh, he arrived to the band and I was around 13 years old. And he was always uh, practicing a little bit before the rehearsal started. And I was always listening and thinking that it sounds really fun to play euphonium. So the reason for euphonium is just he sounded great and I wanted to play like that. So after a few years, I started to play euphonium with him as my teacher and uh, really enjoyed the switch. I really, really love uh, the instrument. And then trombone, uh, the reason for that is because in the military bands, you have to play both euphonium and a little bit of trombone in the audition. So I understood that I have to learn this instrument. And from the start, it was really challenging to switch <laughs> because I knew exactly how it should sound and it didn't sound like that at all when I started. So I was struggling some years with it. Uh, but last year I did, um, uh, I went to a university to do like a one year trombone studies with a final exam. And then I kind of really got into my trombone playing. So after that, I'm really enjoying it now. It's a lot of fun. Mm. So for instance, if you go marching, is it euphonium or trombone? Euphonium. It's euphonium. Yeah. 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 We don't do a lot of marching, but a little bit we do here. Because we have a lot of snow, so it's not possible to do a lot of marching outside. <laughs> Which is okay. Yeah. It's not it's yeah. too much, but it's not the favorite thing, maybe. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, I, I I totally get that. Yes, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> so do you think there was an event that occurred um, that made you think, I'm going to do this as a career, I'm going to be a musician? Was there something that happened for you to go down that road? Uh, it was, in fact, kind of a coincidence, because after I did my high school with uh, Tomer Flat as my teacher, we decided I should have it as a goal to just do an audition in a university. And uh, suddenly I got in and I hadn't really thought about a musical career before that. So then I just started to see how it would feel. And after four years, I had my bachelor degree and then I was just going. But um, it was never like my dream to be a musician from when I was young. I was going to be a journalist, in fact. That was like my dream. But now I'm really happy that I'm a musician. Excellent. Yeah. Great. No, that sounds that sounds brilliant. 
Um, and so when it comes to, uh, I guess, euphonium and trombone, um, the different mutes that you use, um, is there a particular way that you practice with the mutes that you use them that way? Or do you use them just for changing the sound? What's your particular take on that? Yeah, mostly it's uh, if I do solos or if I have some pieces in the band where I need uh, the mute. Um, I really like that the wooden mute from then this week. I, it's a really nice and warm sound in it. Uh, and I, of course, use this one a lot for my travels. I, it's, it's really great to just have it stuck on my belt for all the times. The first time I, I um, uh, discovered this uh, travel mute was um, I was a soloist with a um, military band in Bergen where Tom is playing, my teacher. And I was backstage and I was so nervous because I realized I couldn't do any warm up because they would hear me in the front of the stage, yeah. And I was maybe, I was quite young. And I didn't know that this exists, this mute. And Tomo told me, do you want to use my my travel mute to do like a few tones? And I was like, wow, I never saw this in my life. <laughs> so then I, I could kind of relax and I could do my, my practicing like a little bit warm ups, 10 minutes before I could go on stage, which was very helpful. So then I ran to the shop and bought one for me after that. Yeah, no, they're very convenient. And the fact they fit in the bell perfectly so you don't have to take a separate bag. It works really well. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then uh, the final question. So it's a very quick whiz through these questions, which is fine. Uh, who do you think inspired you more? Was it the people that you're playing with? Uh, your your colleagues or was it teachers or was it before that it might have even been recordings or YouTube what do you think's your biggest inspiration mm, I think um, brass bands have always been a big inspiration for me since I was young and Bergen where I'm from have a lot of great brass bands like Eitan Obiasvik and Manga uh, so already from maybe 13, 14, I went to all the concerts that I could. And it's, it's so, you're so into that world and you know all the players in the band. And, and uh, yeah, that was really inspiring for me. And at that time when we didn't have really YouTube or Instagram or something, I always went to the library to bring CDs from the brass band and from Dyke and Corey and just, listening for hours. So I think Brisbane is like my main, main, um, uh, like what I really enjoyed a lot when I was younger. And uh, when I could start to travel a bit, I remember I went to see uh, Demondre Turman, euphonium player from America. Really, really great player that uh, inspired me a lot. Hmm. Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much for taking the time out to do the interview. Um, it's great to have somebody from – you're probably the person that's highest up in the globe that we've spoken to, I think, so far. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's a great uh, great difference compared to some of the – I've been speaking to people in Mexico and uh, Australia, so this is something very different. Thank you very much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, thank you.